We have a big flare player on the Earth-facing disk, and another one has just rotated into view. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this week has calmed down for the most part. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, we have region 3098 here in the north. It's beginning to rotate to the sun's west limb, and it's actually shown quite a bit of growth over the last day or so. It's even fired an M-class flare, but for the most part, the activity is pretty much false starts. Nonetheless, we are still watching it for, especially for radiation storms, and I'll talk about the reason why more in a minute. Meanwhile, we also have region 3102 that's in the south. It's just rotated into view. This region is a solar storm player. It did launch some solar storms while on the sun's far side, so we're going to be paying attention to it because in about two to three days, it will be rotating into the Earth strike zone, and if it launches a solar storm, it could definitely be Earth directed. Outside of that, we have a small coronal hole that's rotating through center disk right now. Sadly, this coronal hole is not going to send us enough fast wind with the right polarity to give us a big solar storm. So don't get too excited about it, but it could give us unsettled conditions here in about two to three days. But outside of that, everything that we see on the Earth-facing disk is pretty calm. Uh, we are waiting for new regions to rotate into Earth view from the sun's far side, and that's when activity will pick up. Switching to our M-flare threat meter, as we take a look at the X-ray flux over this past week, we've been sitting right about the seafloor, but you notice on the 11th we started to rise a little bit. That means by proxy the solar flux is also rising. We're well into the triple digits, and this means amateur radio operators should be enjoying some decent radio propagation on Earth's day side. And this rise has been due to region 3098 growing in complexity, but also region 3102 beginning to rotate into Earth view. These are the two big flare players. And in fact, as you notice, we did pop a small uh, M-class flare, really short-lived. We call this an impulsive flare, back late on the 12th. This was from region 3098, which since then has been kind of teasing us, expecting, uh, you know, we're expecting to see more from it, but it's just kind of hovering below that M-flare threat level. Uh, but we are watching it as it begins to rotate to the sun's west limb, and the reason for that is that it begins to up that risk for radiation storms. And meanwhile, we're already in radiation storm territory. We have elevated fluxes from radiation from, uh, from a far side uh, launch that caused a radiation storm that's actually managed to make its way to Earth. We're only at elevated levels right now, but it won't take much to pop us over that S1 storm level. So we're kind of watching that. Also on top of that, we have uh, elevated uh, electron fluxes in the radiation belts right now. And so satellite operators, especially in geo and in MEO orbits, are not enjoying their time right now. So we really don't need any more radiation storms at the moment. We'd like things to kind of calm down. So we're definitely watching that region very, very closely. Meanwhile, we expect that these conditions will continue over the next few days and possibly increase a little bit more simply because we have new regions that are going to be rotating into Earth view over this next week. Switching to our solar storm conditions, back at the beginning of the month, we actually started out with reasonably quiet conditions, but it didn't last long. We had a coronal hole with some fast solar wind that hit us pretty hard, and by the 4th, wham, you can see it right there, we actually bumped to G2 storm levels, and that brought aurora clear down to mid-latitudes, and it actually lasted for quite some time. In fact, we continued storming all through the 4th, the 5th, and even into the 6th, we had some decent levels of active conditions, and by the 7th we finally started calming down a little bit, but my goodness, we continued to have periodic active conditions clear through to the 9th before things really totally quieted down. So Aurora photographers, I sure hope you took advantage of this long duration storming that we had. We're going to be quiet for a little while. We're not going to see any storming like this from any fast wind until the beginning of October, but this coronal hole could actually return and give us more storming if it survives its far side passage. So kind of mark in pencil your books for October, the very beginning of October, because we could see this kind of thing again. 
again. Meanwhile, things have continued to quiet down, and right now we're at unsettled conditions. These conditions will easily continue over this next week unless we get some solar storm launches, because there really doesn't look like there's much in the forecast. So war photographers just continue to enjoy, and amateur radio operators and emergency responders expect to enjoy some decent propagations even on the Earth's night side, because it looks like you're all in the clear. And during the recent solar storming that extended from basically the 4th all the way to the 9th, we had some gorgeous aurora over many parts of the world. I can't possibly show them all to you, but thank you to all the aurora photographers who sent me pictures. They're just absolutely spectacular, so I'm going to share some of them now. Like this one in Norway. And we had gorgeous aurora in Denmark. And it was all over Scotland. So many people reporting from Scotland. It's wonderful. And it also dipped down into the UK. And as we begin to move over the pond, it was seen in Iceland. And as we reach the Western Hemisphere, it was seen all over Canada, including Quebec. And in Ontario. And it was seen in Manitoba. And in Saskatchewan. And of course in Alberta. And then it dipped down into the United States. We saw it in many places in the United States. I'm only going to show a few. Like this from North Dakota. And South Dakota. It was seen in Michigan. And in Wisconsin. And we saw it in Minnesota. And it made it clear to Washington State. But we also saw it in places where we don't get to see it very often, like New Hampshire. And it dipped down into Nevada. And even down into Wyoming. And then down south, we did see some aurora. A lot of people were clouded out, but we did see some gorgeous aurora in Tasmania and also in New Zealand. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our partially far-sighted monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun just a tiny bit from the side. And when we take a look at Stereo A's view, you can definitely see region 3098 as it begins to rotate uh, off to the sun's west limb in the north, and then region 3102 as it rotates into Stereo's view down in the south. Now this region is firing solar storms and big flares. You can actually see it before it uh, rotated into Earth view, launching a big solar storm there. So aurora photographers, you know, we're going to keep our eyes on this region because it could launch Earth-directed solar storms in about two to three days. We'll, we'll see whether or not it, it, it continues to stay active, but we have high hopes. Meanwhile, we also have some bright regions in the north. Not too much going on there, but the big story is in helioseismology. As we take a look at our sun's far side using that, we see a big dark region uh, that's about center disk on the far side, and that means that's region 3089, which was an old big flare player from about three weeks ago. This region Region looks like it's surviving its far side passage. It's going to be rotating back into Earth view in about a week. And if it does continue to act the way it is here, it could once again be a, be a big flare player and big solar storm player. So Aurora photographers, we've got more to look forward to here over the next week. Switching to our moon, we are now coming out of the full moon phase on our way to a third quarter. And by the 18th, the moon will still be about 44% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, you've got this bright companion to contend with. So be sure to check your local rise and set times. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, the space weather this week remains reasonably quiet. We don't have much in the way of solar storming except for a little bit of fast solar wind from a, a coronal hole that's rotating into the Earth strike zone over the next few days. But it's not really the right polarity, so we're not going to expect all that much activity from it. In fact, at high latitudes, NOAA is only expecting active conditions, but we do have up to about a 30% chance of a major storm, but likely that's a bit overblown. 
blown. It's a bit optimistic. At mid-latitudes, we're only expecting unsettled conditions, but we do have up to about a 10% chance of a minor storm, and this will be over the next day or a few days until things kind of settle down a little bit from that fast solar wind. But again, it's likely not going to give us much more than some, you know, some storming at high latitudes. So Aurora photographers, if you're at mid-latitudes, you're likely going to need to sit this one out. And amateur radio operators, everything on Earth's night side should be pretty good. And GPS users, you probably shouldn't have to worry too much unless you're under Aurora. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we do have a lot of active regions on the Earth-facing disk, but really only two big flare players. These are regions 3098 and 3102. And region 3098 is the biggest player right now. In fact, it's the reason why NOAA is giving us about a 30% chance of M-class flares and even a 5% chance of X-class flares over the next few days. Luckily, region 3098 will be rotating to the sun's far side as we approach the weekend, and that will mean things will calm down a little bit. Nice thing, though, is that solar flux is staying in the 150s. We might even bump up to the 160s before things kind of begin to wane a little bit. But don't worry, we do have region old region 3089 that'll be rotating into Earth view over this next week, and that will likely keep those solar flux numbers quite high. So amateur radio operators, your radio propagation will remain good on Earth's day. Side. Now, the big story is actually when it comes to radiation storms. Right now, we're sitting at elevated flux levels. We're below that S1 threat level right now. However, those fluxes still continue to be elevated. And as region 3098 uh, rotates to the sun's west limb, that means we have an increased risk for more radiation storms. In fact, NOAA is giving us about a 15% chance of an S1 uh, storm level over the next few days. And those things, that risk, however, will calm down as we get to the weekend and that region rotates to the sun's far side. So you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew and any high risk passengers, just stay vigilant right now. Everything is all good, but you should definitely check the forecast often. So the space weather this week remains reasonably quiet. We do have a couple big flare players on the Earth-facing disk, and one of them is a solar storm producer, but it hasn't launched any Earth-directed solar storms as of yet. We only have a pocket of fast solar wind from a small coronal hole that's about to rotate in through the Earth strike zone, but likely it's not gonna give us all that much in the way of aurora. So aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you could likely get a sporadic show over the next few days, but, you know, if you're at mid-latitudes, you're likely going to have to sit this one out. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, you know, radio propagation on Earth's day side is actually pretty good, but we are getting a bit of noise on the bands because we do have those two big flare players. However, we're not getting a lot of big radio blackouts, just a lot of noise. So things are, might be all right for you. And on top of that, we have that big flare player, region, old region 3089, that'll be rotating back into Earth view over this, well, about a, a week's time. So that region will definitely make sure that that solar flux continues to be boosted and you'll continue to enjoy decent radio propagation conditions on Earth's day side. Now, you GPS users, well, you know, things aren't looking too bad for you. You have a higher flux than you necessarily want to, and that impacts uh, uh, reception at low latitudes, but we don't have any big solar storms going on right now. So reasonably at high latitudes and all pretty much all over Earth's day side, GPS reception should be pretty good. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.